Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, well, except for today. Because numbers have been achieved and there is now a mighty four and a five at the beginning of this channel's subscriber count, followed by three other numbers, no less. Meaning that we must celebrate by featuring some more of your best channel comments. Enjoy. And to commence things on this fine day, I find that I have to call out Lucas Flaming here, who was trying to seek refuge on my channel. I'm hiding from my girlfriend. So girlfriend of Lucas Flaming, he's here and he's been making an awful mess. Kindly come and collect him from the front counter. Next up is Caesar Salvador, who had a rebuttal to my recent video on the Toge Toge no Mi, also known as the Spike Spike Fruit. Bill Cosby has the Spike Spike Fruit. And you know, while that may be true, Bill Cosby actually possesses the Spike Spike Fruit model Rohypnol. It's a, a very different type of fruit from Miss Doublefingers altogether. But moving into more wholesome territory, we have Hengus with a delightful observation in regards to the powers of a certain member of the worst generation. I'd say Scratch Manapu has the best tasting devil fruit because he can make some sweet jams. And I find it very, very difficult to argue with that logic. Thankfully, to balance things out, we now have a comment completely devoid of logic from Prizo Mue. I love your channel, but you are an amateur. Vivid is part of Puffy, are you tripping? And to be honest, I, I think I am. I think I am tripping because the more I read the second part of that comment, the less sense it makes. And the same sort of response could also be applied to this comment from Ramsey Inoka. Haki and cum cum fruit makes Luffy very strong. And then of course, we just have to take a step back and realize that no, it was not Luffy who ate the cum cum fruit because it was actually Charlotte Opera. Now recently in the manga, we've been treated to the majesty of the Wano arc and don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the former leader of CP9, Spandam, who is apparently a viewer of the channel, who knew, had this to say on the matter. One Piece is officially a better ninja manga than Naruto. Shots fired there. But moving into the anime now, and this channel has recently begun a closer inspection on the animated medium, resulting in the ignition of the old school anime versus manga debate. And I would now like to present a mighty two, count them two reasons why the anime may be better. The first of which comes from Simpleton S. Man. The anime does filler episodes way better than the manga. And I can't fault Simpleton there, although to be fair, Long Ring Long Land did also exist in the manga, so arguably the manga does filler just that little bit better. But we also have another argument coming from the well of wisdom that is Drake Chehast. Anime is always better because I can't read. By which I assume he means that dub anime is always better because you know, with anything else, you'd need to be able to read subtitles or understand Japanese. However, given everything that we know of Drake so far, I seriously doubt the latter. But to cap off this anime praise, we have Easy Breezer, who was extraordinarily pleased with episode 870, also known as the Snake Man episode. If I had the choice between having the opportunity to watch this episode for the first time again, or fucking a group of supermodels, I would probably choose this episode. Hashtag better than porn. However, that did come with a rather important caveat. Being honest, watching this episode is probably 10 minutes more fun than I would have had with the models anyway. A brutally honest self-assessment from Easy Breeze there. But now it's time for this week's edition of What Were You Doing Whilst Watching My Videos? Featuring special guest appropriate account. Mr. Account, if that is indeed your real name, what have you been doing whilst viewing the channel? I've been pissing out my ass for three hours now, and I've spent that whole time watching your videos. And I feel honored, I think. You know what, I, I'm not sure actually. In fact, I'm going to repress the fact that I had ever read that comment as we get down to business. Last week, you were all asked a semi-important question by Madmaster001, and that question was, if you could invite one of the Straw Hats to dinner, who would you pick? And Madmaster001, we appear to have our answers, commencing, with Oliver Harms. I would invite Zoro because he would get lost on the way to dinner and I wouldn't have to pay for two because let's face it, I'm broke. Some fine frugal reasoning there. But next up we have Random who is also planning this hypothetical dinner in a strategic manner. I'd invite Luffy. That way I'll lose weight by not getting a chance to eat or starve to death. I don't know. Random there equating losing weight and starving to death as a win-win situation. Heading into more civilized territory though, we have Anna X Eric Forever, who chose the ever delightful musician of the crew to dine with. I would invite Brooke because we could bond over takoyaki, playing instruments and skull jokes. And for the record, I am a woman who would not mind telling Brooke the color and style of her panties. No peep show though. PS, who won the skeleton beauty contest? Nobody. 
Skull joke. <laughs> Yo. And I, I added the laugh there because I thought it was pretty essential. And next up we have Laura, Knight of Torna, who has a very specific fantasy to live out. I would love to have dinner with Jinbei. I could make a crockin' bush and have him throw it in my mouth. And hey, I guess it worked for Big Mom, so why not you? But speaking of Jinbei, our final answer comes from Super AB Positive, who states, Jinbei, somebody's gotta remember he's a straw hat. Oh. And with that, we are going to call this question somewhat satisfactorily answered and move on to the next need to know inquiry, which this time I warn you is a little bit abstract. And it comes from you can't beat K. Are Loof boneless or not boneless? So yeah, good. Good luck answering that. But that pretty much does it for this edition of the best channel comments. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.